Hey everyone, I hope this video finds you well and enjoying your day. If you are new here, I'm Christopher and welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so excited that you decided to watch this video. And if you are a person who likes lifestyle, luxury, skincare, product reviews, planning and organization, look no further my friend because this place is for you. So go ahead and click that little red subscribe button and if you are doing that, you might as well hop on over to Instagram and follow me over there as well. I'll leave my handle right here on the screen and you should know that I answer every single YouTube comment and as many Instagram comments as I possibly can and we are a fast growing, beautiful community and we would love to have you join us. So I asked over on Instagram what kind of video you would want to see and everyone requested that I do another Q&A video. So that's what I'm bringing you today. And there were so many really great questions that I'm really excited to dive into. There is no way that I will be able to answer every single one, but I will save them for an upcoming Q&A video in the month of June. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right in. First question, Kyra Haley asks, out of everywhere that you've traveled, what's your favorite place? Steven and I will both tell you the same thing. It is Estremoz, Portugal. We traveled to Lisbon a couple years ago and we ended up wandering out to this little village um, by taking a train and it's called Estremoz and literally the place had maybe two restaurants, a bakery, a general store, and <laughs> that's about it. And we fell in love with it. We met uh, really great people while we were there. One of my favorite people I've ever met while traveling, her name was Lordish. We met in a bakery. It ended with a hug. Um, yeah, it's just a beautiful village. And Stephen and I know that we enjoy smaller places that maybe many tourists or any tourists even travel to. And that's kind of what we're gonna do from now on. We're gonna travel less to bigger cities and more to little small villages to really get to know what the culture is like. Um, so yeah, Estremoz, Portugal, favorite place we've ever been. Seaside Stickers asks, how did you find your planning style? Have you found planner peace? And what's your favorite part of planning? My favorite part of planning is keeping my life together because I have a lot going on with work and my real life. Well, work is my real life, but I have a lot going on, so like it helps me keep track. And I have many meetings in a week, so it's really important that I'm organized. Um, how did I find my planning style? I learned very quickly that I'm not like big on washi tape and stickers. I've tried to force myself to do it and use them a lot. And I used to buy stickers upon stickers upon stickers upon stickers. Um, there are still some brands that I really love, like the Happy Planner stickers, but those are more like utilitarian stickers or inspirational. I used to try like all kinds of like seasonal stickers, like no. Um, I also learned that I hate stamps for the most part, except for like the BLD ones that I've used in my Plan With Me videos. Um, I just don't like a lot going on. Um, have I found Planner Peace? Honestly, since I switched over to bullet journaling, I think I have. I'm really enjoying it. It feels really, it feels really authentic to my style and my aesthetic. I just really have enjoyed it. I'll leave my bullet journal videos linked down below in case you're interested. What was the first item you ever bought that you felt was a luxury item? I talked about this in a vlog not long ago. The very first piece that I ever bought was the Coach Varick messenger bag. It was like this gray nondescript large messenger bag and I saved up for it in college because I worked at a zoo and I made no money um, and it was like $400 uh, roughly and it took me forever to save up for it and I thought it was everything. Have you always taken such good care of your skin? with products, masks, and serums. Yes, I have always been someone, even in high school, I'd say more when I got to college, like someone who always took really good care of their skin. I mean, I was like the Noxzema king. I like, I almost said queen there. That would have been awkward, but not far from the truth. I always was like very conscious of my skin because I had such problems, um, especially towards the end of my high school career. I like broke out all the time around my nose and my mouth and my forehead. Um, so yeah, it was really important to me and I've only upped my game as I've gotten older. Um, the next question is Sheena Lee Watercolors, um, who's given me so much great advice. Thank you, my friend. Would you be willing to review any vegan luxury bags? Yes, I just recently bought that matte net bag. If you're over on Instagram, you've definitely seen me using it. Um, I am going to do a full review on that bag coming up because it's a new brand. It's completely vegan. Daniela asks, how do you manage to fit everything in your daily schedule? Work, workout, family time, cooking, filming, relaxing, baths, me time, shopping, etc., etc. I need to know. 
Um, oh, hugs from Italy. Oh, we love Italy, Daniela. Um, how do I fit it all? I literally give everything a time in my planner. If you guys watch my Plan With Me videos, I write everything from like waking up to my meditating, to my workout, to even when I'm going to read my books at night and when I'm going to take my bath. I find that like oftentimes we put our work and like important life events in, but we never put our me time things or anything. That's how I make it all fit. Um, if you watch my Plan With Me videos, you even see that I chunk out time on the weekends where I'm cleaning and exactly what I am cleaning so that I use that time really valuably. Um, I find that everyone says we need more hours in a day. That's actually not true. There are enough hours. It's just that you have to proactively plan and manage those hours. I think about it this way. The biggest gift that you have to give to yourself, to give to your friends, to give to your work is your time. So manage it really aggressively and be unapologetic when saying, nope, that doesn't work for me. I can't make that appointment. I can't make that event. I can't do that right now. Um, your best gift to everyone is your time. What is your greatest accomplishment in life so far? What is your next big goal? My next big goal is to get in really good shape and um, like focus less on like the weight and all of that and just get stronger and feel more athletic. That's my next big goal. I'd say the greatest accomplishments in my life are my weight loss, um, which I've talked about a lot on the channel. Um, I'll insert a picture like right around here um, of my weight loss so you can see how far I've come and I want to go a little bit further with it. And my relationship with Steven, uh, it's not always been perfect, but it's really, really good and I'm really blessed. And uh, yeah, those are probably my two greatest accomplishments. Besides my work, I love my work as well. Jenny Nova also asked, do you ever do any of your planning digitally? No, I am a pen and paper person. People laugh at me at work because our work is pretty email, outlook, all of that, and I still have to write everything down. People act like I'm like Abraham Lincoln sitting by a fire with like a candlelight. <laughs> they always are like, why do you write everything? Pat McMet asked a really good question. Him and I have commented back and forth. He's an awesome subscriber. I enjoy him a lot. But he asked a great question, and it was, how much do material things mean to you? And would you be as happy as you are without Louis Vuitton, business class flights, and a fancy house? Not jealous, just curious. I think this question is great. And I think I could give you that answer of, yes, I'd be just as happy and life would be great. Um, but I'm going to be really honest. If Stephen and I were to lose everything, I would be sad and I would definitely, definitely miss it. But to answer the true question of would I be as happy, mm -hmm, I would be. Because I have spent a lot more years of my life without anything and struggling than I have with material goods and business class seats, as you said. Um, I mentioned in my Q&A, like, I grew up relatively poor. If not, I would say we were poor and we struggled very much financially. And when I moved out on my own for six years, I lived off of $200 a month because after I paid my bill, that's all I had left. Um, and I didn't have stuff. But when I look at those times, I have a lot of great memories. And I think when I step back and I would miss those things, but when I think about the greatest times in my life, it's not times where I was buying something or something new was gifted to me or any of those things. When I think back about my greatest times, we're not spending any money. It's sitting around with my family and my grandparents and talking and laughing our heads off. It is sitting on the front porch with my grandma as she read Anna Green Gables to me. Um, those memories are the things that truly make me happy to this day and they cost us nothing. So I would still be just as happy because, like I said, I've spent more of my life with less, so, and I've been a pretty happy person. Valerie Mings asks, what's one luxury item you regret buying or that you think is not worth it? Um, yes, I've talked about this a couple times. I bought these Balenciaga espadrilles. They're the worst shoes I've ever bought. I regret buying them. They are uncomfortable. It feels like your shoes are filling up with blood. They hurt that much. I try to wear them, I try to break them in. I've even taken them to Nordstrom's where they do the shoe breaking in. Nothing helps them, I, I hate them. The other purchase, like big purchase that I regret, and I just actually posted on Instagram because I was trying to give it another try, it's the Hermes Kelly wallet. Uh, the strap of it is really difficult to use as a wallet on the daily. I find that I never end up clasping it. It becomes such a hassle. I've already switched it out because I didn't enjoy using it. I love the look of it. I love the aesthetic of it. I love everything about it, but I just cannot bring myself to make it work in my life, but I will never part with it because I also think it's so beautiful and I love it. 
she also asked, have you ever thought of switching careers and being a house husband? <laughs> no, because I am far too independent, and Stephen will tell you this, I am far too independent to ever be a house husband, and I would also say that I love my job probably more than anyone loves their job, and I could never imagine not doing it. I could never imagine not doing it. I can't even imagine retiring ever. So, Steve and I talk about that all the time. I can't imagine myself ever stopping unless I physically cannot do it. QNE 1911 asks, what advice would you give to your younger self and why would you give yourself that advice? I would tell myself that the opinions of others don't matter and are only true if you believe their opinions and that you do not let what someone thinks your life will be dictate what your life will be. Because what I've learned is I spent a lot of time believing what people would say about me. Like I talked about in my first Q&A, I was bullied. And I started to believe the things they said. And I now realize that once I was able to let it go, forgive them, move on, and focus on what I thought about myself, it changed the whole trajectory of my life. And if you told me I'd be sitting here where I'm at with my career, with my relationship, with my life in general, I wouldn't have believed you because I believed them. Uh, lots of you asked how did Steven and I meet. I'm going to leave my other Q&A link down below because I've already answered that. Liggy Sue asked, hi Christopher, are you a neat freak? Watching your daily vlogs, your home is immaculate. I myself am a neat freak, but it can drive me crazy. Um... I am a neat freak, but what is really helpful is Steven is also a neat freak. Steven was in the military, so he's automatically a very neat person, like the bed is made immediately. So our styles work really well together because neither of us like clutter and both of us are neat. Where I am not a neat freak is my closet. It is a disaster. I clean it every single weekend and vow that I will do better. And by the next weekend, it is a disaster and you can't see the floor. Do you have a favorite sunscreen? I do. I have my all-time favorite daily sunscreen. It's by Chanel. I really love it. I had found it about a year ago and I've not stopped using it ever since. Um, but like if I'm going on a vacation where I'm going to be like laying out on a beach, um, or like hiking or somewhere out in the sun. I love super goop and I'll leave the one also linked down below that I love to use What editing do you use for your videos? Were you familiar with it or did you have to learn? Um, I am using iMovie because I didn't know if this channel was even going to be successful or if people would watch it So I wasn't going to invest in anything. I had never edited a video in my entire life until I edited my first one. Literally never edited anything. I never filmed the video. Um, it was never anything that I was interested in. I actually wasn't interested in the filming or editing aspect of the YouTube channel. It was more about the connection with people. So everything I've done so far, I'm just learning and looking up and doing the best I can. I hope I get better as we go on. Yeah, I'm using iMovie and then I told Steven when we hit 10K, I'm gonna upgrade an even better camera equipment and also Final Cut Pro and try to learn that as well, but um, I'm completely self-taught and the first video I ever edited in any capacity has been for this channel. Where are you from originally? I'm from Somerset County, Pennsylvania in Western PA. Mary Ann asked, how did you find Bubba's? And so many of you have asked this question. So we got Bubba's in Charlotte, North Carolina when we still lived there and he is a rescue dog. And Steven and I knew we wanted a Labradoodle, so we went to the shelter, not expecting to ever find one, actually, but we wanted to try the shelter first, just to see if we found a dog that we really liked. We walked through, didn't see anything, and we literally watched the lady walk across the hallway with Bubba's on a leash. And I was like, that looked like a Labradoodle. And I like ran after her and was like, hey, can we play with him? And they let us play with him, and we fell in love with him, but we weren't willing to make the commitment to him right away. This was on a Saturday. So Saturday afternoon we went back home and but they had posted Bubba's online that was his first day there. And Saturday night came and I'm like, I knew I really wanted him but Steven wasn't sold yet. And I pretended I was online looking at him and I was like, babe, they, that dog's been adopted. And I could see Steven like, like look sad. And I said, oh, you like him? And he's like, I do. And I was like, he's still available. I was just seeing if you really, really loved him because I think he's the dog for us. We made up our mind that we were going to go the next morning. So we drove to the shelter before it opened and stood right at the door. And there were people behind us. And we went in. We were the first ones at the table. We paid, adopted him because we didn't have to see him or play with him. 
literally the people behind us in line were there to look at the Labradoodle that was just brought to the shelter. So we are so fortunate to have gotten him and we've now had him for nine years and we love him beyond belief. But that's how we got him. What are some other hobbies besides the stuff you already talk about on your channel? I love running. I love tennis. I love watching tennis. I love playing tennis. Other things that I love, I love board games. I will play games like any chance that I get. I feel like it's one of my favorite things to do with friends and family. K.R. Hatch asked a really great question. What recommendation can you give a college student who no longer knows um, the course they want to take? I would say give yourself permission to really think about it because it's a big decision, one that costs you money, and it's okay to step back and take some time and really think about it because it is such a big decision. And I would encourage you in that step back moment to maybe try to get a part-time job or volunteer at an environment where you think you might be interested in. You might not be, or you will not be in the role that you want to end up in, but at least you're in the environment and you can see if it's a place you like, if it's a place you enjoy that inspires you. I'd also step back and just brainstorm lists of things you love and see if that lends itself to any sort of career choices. And don't let people convince you that you have to do something in order to make money. If you had a very modest income, what are some budget-friendly items you, you would use to make your home warm and inviting? And also, what would you splurge on? I would always splurge on curtains. I think good curtains that are very tailored to fit your windows is extremely important. I think when people try to cut corners around curtains, it can sometimes deflate the, the, the level of that a room looks just because they don't look as high quality. Um, so I would always splurge on curtains. Where I would use budget friendly items to warm up a space, area rugs. And you're gonna say, but area rugs are expensive. No, they're not. Look on places like Overstock. I buy so many of my rugs there for less than $100 and they make a whole room feel completely different. And then at the end of the day, I think throw pillows, throw blankets, and candles and plants. You have those things in a room, it automatically feels warm and cozy and inviting. How do you deal with days when just about everything goes wrong? Wine, lots and lots of it. Um, <laughs> that is so funny, Caitlin. Um, honestly, I will always call my mom. I'll typically close my office door and call my mom. <clears throat> and then I also always touch base with Stephen beforehand because Stephen is one of the nicest, most comforting people. And I'll let him know like, babe, today was a really rough day. And he'll be like, I'll take care of dinner, just get home. Um, and then he'll give me like a good hour to two when he gets home and he won't ask me any questions about anything. And he'll just like kind of sit with me um, and then we'll talk about it and I always feel better and I step back and I think about what were all the things that went right today and These five things went really wrong, but what's the big impact of them? And I often realize that the impact of the things that went wrong versus the impact of the things that went right um, Are usually very unbalanced and the things that I thought were such a big deal are a big deal in the moment But long term or not. What are your top five skincare must-haves? SK2 Facial Treatment Essence, SK2 Clear Facial Lotion, Garnier Micellar Water, La Mer Soft Cream is 100% one, and the Herbivore Botanicals Brightening Mask, 100% need them. What are your three most favorite fragrances? SJP Stash, Elizabeth and James Bourbon and Jonah Malone Myrrh and Tonka. I can name them quickly. That's how much I love them. Favorite cleaning products? Mrs. Myers. Love them all. What is a skill you want to learn and why? And if you could travel anywhere to do anything, what would it be and where? Skill I would love to learn is playing the piano because I love music so much, but I realize I'm too late in my life to learn. But actually, you're never too late. Um, it's just something I'd always want to pick up, and I am so envious of people who can play the piano. Uh, where do you want to travel to next? Steven and I are actually thinking either Hong Kong or Tokyo. Um, we're just waiting to see how much our basement renovation is going to cost us before we schedule our next trip. We have one more appointment with contractors this week. Your home is large and spotless. I love your home decor. 
Do you have a cleaning person? No. This is a whole other story. Steven and I did have a cleaning person at our house previously and we had a really bad experience with them and I will never do it again. Um, I also enjoy cleaning so much that it doesn't bother me. So Steven and I clean this entire house ourselves and it is about 3,200 square feet um, for just two of us and we keep it pretty clean. Um, but no, no cleaning person and I'll never have another. Also, another question, when Bubba's went to your in-laws, they called him Toby, am I wrong? Yes, Bubba's legal name on all his documentation is Toby, but the first week we had him, I started calling him Bubba's, and then Steven started calling him Bubba's, and that has been his name, but everyone else calls him Toby. Lots of questions about managing your time, I already mentioned that. Favorite mask of all time is the Herbivore and Botanicals Brightening Pineapple Mask. It is my favorite mask ever. I still use that. I've bought that one at least probably six times and I use it at least twice a week. I love that. I love that mask. It is the best. Girls in Raspberry Pink asked, although your sunny disposition seems to be inherent, part of your personality with lots of influence from your grandmother and family, was there ever a period in your life where you felt a sense of despondency or helplessness? Yes. Um, I mentioned in my last Q&A how much I was bullied. It was significant. Um, from having an apple slammed so hard on the side of my head that the apple actually like burst and I had pieces and we had to go get my eardrum examined. This was in high school. Um, to having everyone gather around my locker and they had filled it with training brawls because I was very overweight at the time. Um, and I opened it up and they fell out and people laughed at me. Um, I've had like horrible things happen. Um, but I always knew that my family loved me so much and they took such good care of me and my favorite times as a high schooler or middle schooler were spent with my grandmother and my family. Um, but yeah, my high school and middle school career was, was really, really tough. Um, I still sometimes look back and be like, how did you get through it? Um, and I've forgiven all of them. They didn't know what they were doing. They were, they were just kids. Um, and I think that's one way how you move beyond it, but yeah. We all need to face inevitable demons, but so many of us never are taught coping skills. Have you any thoughts on coping strategies? Count your blessings. And I mean like truly count what you are so grateful for in your life because you take all of them for granted and you never take the time to recognize and name them. And I feel like when you really start to weigh what is good in your life versus what is bad, the good will always outweigh the bad if you really look at it and really examine it and really dig deep for it. I just think the things that are negative arise to the surface and they're the things that we most easily remember. Um, so forcing yourself to really stay in that moment of how blessed you are. And then I always put things into perspective of like, whatever I'm dealing with that in that moment, there are people in this world who are dealing with so many other horrific things that I can't even imagine, and it makes my problems seem a little less large. Freddie asks, I love the travel vlogs. I'm going to be traveling out of the country pretty soon. Just wondering what kinds of do's and don'ts or any kinds of tips you recommend for international travel. Have a couple. Take a picture of your passport and save it on your phone. You can actually use it as some documentation if things were to happen and you were to use your passport. So always keep a picture of that on your phone. Also, um, make sure in your carry-on when you're traveling internationally that you have like days worth of outfits in the carry-on and that not all your outfits are put in to your checked baggage. That way if your baggage gets lost, you have other things um, and outfits to wear. I actually have made that mistake and it was pretty miserable. Uh, next thing that I would say is flag your suitcase with something really brightly colored so that you can e quickly and easily identify your suitcase if it's not one that will stand out. Take your own empty water bottle with you and fill it up once you get in the airport because they will charge you an arm and a leg for water. Um, so that is one tip I always have and take band-aids with you. I cannot believe how many people travel without band-aids and like first aid kit items. Take those things with you because if you get a blister, if you cut yourself, like you will never be able to find them. And if you have to go to a drugstore, chances are they're gonna charge you. If you have to buy it at the airport, they're gonna charge you an enormous amount of money. Travel with a little mini first aid kit. Those would be my quick tips. Uh, Green Snowfall asks, if your biography was written, what would the title of this book be? The title of the book would be 
What Kindness Has Taught Me. I think that would be the title, What Kindness Has Taught Me. Kindness has taught me forgiveness. Kindness has taught me acceptance of myself and others. Kindness has taught me the importance of a smile. And kindness has taught me the importance of listening. Um, that would be the title. I think that's pretty good for just coming up with on the fly. Maybe I should be an author. Well, who in particular would you like to read it? Well, if that was going to be the underlining theme of the book, I would want everyone to read it because I think our world needs it now more than ever. Hannah asks, so excited about this video. Are there things you wish you had known before starting a YouTube channel? Yes, I wish I would have known how to film. I wish I would have known what kind of camera to buy. I wish I would have known how to edit a video. I still wish I knew most of those things. <laughs> I'm just doing the best I can. Um, I think I've been very blessed to have no negativity on my channel. I have since unsubscribed to a bunch of people that I was subscribed to originally just because their comment section made me feel miserable. Um, and I think I wish I had known earlier that we could build this beautiful community as quickly as we have because I would have done it sooner. Because I had filmed videos a couple years ago and just wouldn't post them and deleted them. Um, I wish I would have done it sooner. Anything you wish you would have done differently or that m was more challenging than expected? I wouldn't do anything about this channel any differently. I wouldn't do a single thing differently because I think what we have created is pretty amazing and if you would have told me in five months we'd be at 8,100 subscribers in five months with 50 videos, I would have told you you were crazy. Um, I kind of like the way I'm doing it. I'm staying true to myself. I'm not going to change for anyone. I'm not going to be salacious or use strategies to try to get people just to watch. If kindness and love and joy, along with luxury and planning an organization and lifestyle stuff resonates with you, join us. If it doesn't, that's fine. Um, you're so upbeat. How do you stay that way? I feel like it takes less effort for me to be happy than it takes for me to be negative. I know we always hear that it takes more muscles in your mouth to frown than smile. I think it takes more out of me to be negative and I don't surround myself with negativity. If you are gossiping, I'm, go I'm the person that will get up and walk away or ask you to stop. If you are being negative, I just won't tolerate it and I'll talk to you about it and I will remove myself from situations. If there's music or a movie that feels really negative, full of swearing, full of like inappropriateness, it doesn't feel good to me, I just turn it off. I simply don't surround myself with those things. Um, and I think when you start doing that, life becomes so much easier. I.B. Kelly asks, I love your channel so much and your Instagram. I'm hoping you can show us how you get your mornings going and what you do and how you get motivated and do your day with work and everything. Would you consider doing a video on your mornings before work? It's actually coming. I'm going to do a weekday morning routine and a weekend morning routine. And uh, yeah, so that video is coming as well. Janice asks, why is Underground Railroad one of your favorite books? Oh my gosh, Janice, if I could tell you the reasons why I think this book is my favorite. Uh, one thing I will say is Colton's writing in Underground Railroad is unlike any writing I've ever heard from any author in my entire life. It is just absolutely amazing. Uh, the story of Cora, I think, puts into perspective because it is historically pretty accurate uh, how horrific that time was. And I think people talk about slavery as just a piece of history and don't think about the impact of lives and also the impact that that has had in culture moving forward. Uh, I think it's just a book everyone has to read. I think that book has a chance, I'm going to get emotional talking about it, I think that book has a chance to shift humanity if people were to read it because um, it is just beyond powerful. It is absolutely the most powerful piece of literature I've read in probably ever. Um, and I would be comfortable saying it is my number one all-time favorite book. And I'm so happy because Oprah ended up picking it up as Oprah's book hub book, book this month, and I've been talking about it before that. Um, yeah, just saying. Thank you for your uplifting videos. You've truly inspired me. I'm fascinated about your work. 
Are you able to work from home occasionally or does your job require you to be physically present Monday through Friday? Physically present Monday through Friday. Word Fishy asks, my husband and I both work from home, 100% me, 60% him. He is using a bedroom as like a man cave. How in the world can we make it work as his office? All of that kind of stuff. One of the best piece of advice I would, could give you where it would still be a really great guest room. You mentioned a pull-out sofa. I think that's a great option. But if you get on Overstock, search Murphy beds and they look like beautiful cabinetry with beds that pull out. They are a little bit pricey, but I think a pull-out sofa would be roughly the same cost. And then you can give that room a very office-like vibe, um, but can also still convert it to a guest room. Search Murphy Beds on Overstock or any other place. I've already looked on Overstock for you. There are some beautiful options, but definitely check that out. I think it would be a really easy way to make that space work for everything you need it to. What inspires you to be on YouTube? Connection with people. My only objective and goal with this channel is to bring joy, to bring light, to build a community, and to spread kindness, and that is exactly what we're doing. And, in the, and on the way to that, we talk about skincare, lifestyle, luxury, planning, and organization. But for me, at the core of this channel, it is all about community, it is all about joy, it is all about connection. All right, everyone, that is all the questions I have because this video is incredibly, incredibly long. If you made it to the end, make sure to leave a comment. I hope it was helpful. Ask any more questions that you might have in the comments below because I answer all of the comments. In the meantime, I will leave this video like I leave all of them. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be kind. Kindness is free. Give it to everyone. Until next time, my friends, bye-bye.